Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at finding the best lens for you and your street photography. Okay, so let's cut straight to the chase. There is no such thing as a best lens for street photography. There is only the best lens for you as a street photographer. And that's a really important distinction to make. Manufacturers do not go out and manufacture lenses specifically for one genre of photography. They manufacture a broad range of lenses, which they know will cover most situations that photographers find themselves in. The good news is as street photographers, we don't need any more than one lens. And the reason for that is very simple. We're not on the street shooting commercially. We don't have to please a client. You're only shooting for yourself in effect. So you don't need more than one lens. And the major advantage as a street photographer of having just one lens is that you get rid of any indecisiveness when shooting. If you're the type of photographer that takes two or three lenses out on the street, I can guarantee you because I know because this was me, I can guarantee you, you'll spend more time looking at the back of the camera and cursing the fact that you'd had the wrong lens on at the wrong time for the right picture than you will concentrating on taking photographs. It's a horrendously frustrating experience. So by just concentrating on one lens, the indecisiveness goes away and you can become familiar with that focal length, how that lens allows you to interpret the world. Everything becomes second nature. You can start taking photographs knowing really what the photograph is gonna look like before you bring the camera up to your eye. And that's a really, really powerful position to be in as a photographer. Most of the time, photographers will decide on a lens based on camera reviews, YouTube videos, or what their favorite photographer happens to be shooting with. The problem with that, of course, is that in each case, the people reviewing the camera, the photographer that you admire, the YouTuber you're listening to, are completely different people to you. And when it comes to photography, particularly street photography, your pictures are largely determined by you as a person and not by the gear that you're using. So we're all different, our backgrounds are different, but the way we were brought up, our religious views, our political views, our cultures are different, our ages are different, our life experiences are different, and these are the things that contribute to our photographs. Even physical differences like height. I mean, you consider somebody like me, I'm five foot eight inches. I see the world at a certain height. Somebody that's six foot four inches will see the world at a completely different angle to the way that I see the world. And that makes a difference. So how do we determine which is the best lens for us when it comes to our own photography? The first thing we have to consider is focal length. So how do we start to determine which is the best focal length for us? Well, for me, I guess it's personality to begin with. If you're the type of photographer that's a little bit introverted, a little bit shy, if you're a bit standoffish, you're not comfortable with engaging with strangers on the street, then you aren't really gonna go and buy a 21 millimeter lens and feel comfortable using it. You're more likely to want to go for something a little bit longer, 50 mil, 85 mil. If that's the right lens for you, if that makes you feel comfortable using it, then we're on the road to getting the right focal length. And there's some great photographers that have used long lenses on the street. Saul Leiter, Don McCullen, fantastic imagery taken with telephoto lenses. There's nothing wrong with choosing a focal length of lens which isn't popular with other street photographers if it suits you, your personality, and the way that you want to see the world. On the other hand, if you're somebody that's very much into engaging with people, if you're very much into standing really close to people, then a long lens isn't gonna help you. It's gonna be really frustrating. So you're more likely to gravitate to something like a 28 millimeter lens. If you're happy and you've been shooting street for a while, you tend to know pretty much where you want to stand to get a photograph. If you find yourself in post-production, looking at your computer or getting your films back from the lab or whatever you do, and you want to crop your images tighter than what they are, chances are you're using a lens which is a little bit too wide for you. By the same token, if you look at your photographs and they're very tight top to bottom, if you're looking at them horizontally and they're very tight top to bottom, go a little bit wider with the focal length and that might help you just tidy up that composition, that framing, give your pictures a little bit more room to breathe. If you're shooting with a 28 millimeter lens and everything's, you know, you have to crop it all the time, try a 35 millimeter. This is the kind of journey which I'm talking about. There's a little bit of trial and error 
but fortunately you're not going to be a million miles away from where you are at the moment okay you're going to be within a focal length of where you are at the moment but i know what you're all going to say you're going to say oh well i've got this lens and to buy another lens is going to cost me xyz amount of money which i don't have and what i would say to you is this in the long run getting the right focal length of lens will be the most valuable thing that you can have as a photographer beg borrow or steal well no don't steal obviously but it, it, it's a lot easier now to try the, the different focal lengths out a lot of the stores now allow you to go out on photo walks and try different lenses out and when you decide that that's the focal length that you actually want to buy buy exchange your other lens in for it or sell your other lens and buy the buy the new one and that will also allow you to get control of your indecisiveness because if you hold on to both lenses the chances are you'll take both lenses out with you on the street and then you'll go backwards and forwards deciding on which lens you actually want to use okay so bring one in get rid of the other one that would be my advice so when it comes to choosing a lens, what's most important is that you can take the photographs you want to take with it. And I'll give you an example. This is my Leica F1 Not Deluxe lens. It's a 50 millimeter lens. It's the first 50 millimeter lens I bought for the Leica system. It's very expensive. It's optically quite an amazing lens. It gives a look that no other lens gives it wide open. It's heavy, it's big, it's ugly. It's, it makes the camera unbalanced. I didn't buy this as a street photographer. I bought this as a wedding photographer shooting in low light 23, 24 years ago. This is a 50 millimeter Summicron lens. It's about a quarter of the price. It's an F2 lens, it's not an F1 lens, so it's two stops slower. But that two stops in slowness is giving me a lens which is easier to handle. It's lighter, it's smaller, and at the F stops which I'm using on the street, you can't tell these two apart. So everything from F4 to F8, these two lenses are identical, except this one is far better for me as a street photographer than this one is. And that's what I'm trying to say. You could drop 7,000 pounds on a not deluxe lens or 5,000 on a used one and not get as good a result as something which is a quarter of the price. And that's really important. If you look at something like in the Leica realm, which is the realm that I know, if you look in the Leica realm and you look at say something like a, a, a Zeiss or a Voigtlander lens, then for most situations on the street, you're gonna be hard pushed to tell the difference between a Zeiss, a Voigtlander and a Leica, simply because on the street, we're dealing with movements, we're dealing with spontaneous pictures, we're dealing with awkward lighting situations. We're not dealing with cameras sat on a tripod looking at a scene that doesn't move go for something which you can afford but more than that go for something which suits the way that you want to take pictures so if that's a lightweight lens or a lens that's maybe two or three stops slower than the professional version of a lens or something doesn't matter go with it and i'll give you a little anecdote here a few years ago i was lucky enough to meet uh, sebastian salgado he was over in the uk doing a show and i was able to get backstage and, and meet him and chat with him and so on and he brought his camera out he took one camera with him wherever he went and on the end of the lens was a 40 millimeter pancake lens when i was shooting canon back in the day i i bought this lens for about 75 pounds used okay 75 pounds about i don't know about 90 dollars something like that and this was one of the world's greatest photographers using a pancake lens it fitted the way he saw the world he enjoyed using it it's what he liked so there you go if it's good enough for one of the greatest photographers on the earth to use a cheap lens then it's okay for us you know and he doesn't care he doesn't care what i think of his lens or what anybody else thinks of his lens he's not bothered he just wants to go and take photographs so once we've determined the focal length and we've gone for a, a lens which we're really happy with What's the next step? Well, in my experience, the next step is to take that lens and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot with it. Don't get put off. If you go out and you buy this new lens and um, you put it on your camera and you go out and the first time you go out and your pictures are all over the place or they're not what you wanted to see, don't be put off. That's the worst thing in the world that you can do is to admit defeat at that, that point. You have to learn to use a lens. You have to take it everywhere. You have to go and take pictures with it all the time. You have to learn how to go and use that lens, how to get closer to the people or further away if you've just bought a telephoto. If it's different to what you've had up to this point, you have to spend some time with it because that's the thing that really pays dividends. Learning that lens inside out and back to front is the most important thing that you can actually do with that lens. 
You've probably noticed in this video that I've used a lot of focal lengths over the years, uh, whereas Sarah's just used one, just 28. A couple of years ago, I wanted to find that one focal length that would allow me to do everything that I wanted to do on the street. And I thought I'd found that with the 21 millimeter. But after a couple of years of pretty much just using that one lens, I started to get a bit bored with it. It's a very one dimensional lens. You can only use it within certain distances and you always have to shoot the thing very low down at the chest level or waist level in order to control the distortion when you're so close to people. I'd stayed away from the 28 mainly because it was Sarah's lens. It was always her focal length. And I didn't want to kind of tread on her toes as it were, but she told me not to be stupid and all the rest of it. And so we ended up getting another 28 mil lens and I've been using that relentlessly from about June last year till now. Now there was a couple of blips where I wasn't getting what I wanted and put the 21 back on again, or the 35 back on. And, and then I decided that it was nothing to do with the lens. It was to do with what I was looking at or what I was trying to take. And so I've gone on this journey and now six, seven months later, I'm perfectly comfortable with that lens. And the beauty about it is that even though myself and Sarah now shoot pretty much with the same lens, our pictures still remain quite different from each other. And that just goes to show that it's not the lens that makes the photograph, it's the photographer that makes the photograph. The lens is just the way the photographer can translate what they're seeing in front of them into a photograph which everybody else can see. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Subscribing helps us more than you can ever imagine when it comes to um, having a YouTube channel like this. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'd love to know what you guys are shooting with. I'd love to know what focal length um, people watching this video actually use in their street photography. It'd be really interesting for me to actually see that from you. Anyway, like I said, hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you on the next one.